Now it's time for another Board Game Brawl preview with Nick Meenahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey folks, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called Nova Atos, and it's from the company Ludus Magnus Studio. Now, if you like what you see throughout the rest of this preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter project page, and you don't have a lot of time. There were some issues getting me the prototype as fast as they possibly could, and so I had to put this up in the 11th hour. There's less than two days left before the campaign ends, so if you're interested, if you like what you see here, you got to go over there right now. And the campaign has actually already funded and unlocked a lot of different stretch goals. There's a lot of really interesting stuff going on on the Kickstarter page, so you, know, you don't have to take my word for it. Go there and find Find out for yourself. There's going to be a link up in the top corner of your screen as well as down in the description section of the video. Follow that link, it'll take you right to the Kickstarter project page. Now, what is Nova Atos? This is a fully cooperative fantasy game, but unlike a lot of other fantasy games that are based on like elves and orcs and you know, Tolkien based uh, fantasy games. This one is an alternate history of Earth, specifically the Renaissance in Italy, where there you have all these typical Renaissance-style elements, but at the same time, there is uh, mythological elements from like Celtic mythology, but also uh, Greek mythology. So you have centaurs and fauns, but you've also got just these uh, there's uh, chimeras and things like that that are all blending together in this world that it has more grounded Earth-like elements. Uh, there's it, like I said, it's fully cooperative. Operative. You can uh, customize your characters. It's also based a lot on video games like Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics Ogre, where you can have a character, put them into different specializations like job branches, and also visit towns to get new characters and to uh, flesh out your characters, give them new skills, things like that. I could go on and on, but why don't I show you some of the stuff that's in the game with a prototype version of the game. So keep that in mind, especially considering the fact that if you go over to the Kickstarter page, you can see that the final version of the game is going to be full of high quality plastic miniatures obviously i don't have those for the prototype copy prototype copy that i have they're just standees but as well as like uh, you know, uh all the other components are going to be a little bit different in the final version as well so go to the kickstarter page and find out what you're in store for but let's go ahead and take a look at the prototype version then we're going to come back i'll give you my final thoughts Nova Atos is a fully cooperative board game for 1-4 to four players. The game has two types of missions the players must complete, campaign missions which are linked together and tell an ongoing story, and secondary missions which are side quests triggered by the main campaign that the heroes can choose to go on. Each mission will have its own win and loss conditions for the heroes. There are even bounty hunting missions and animal hunting missions. Nova Atos uses a simple dice system of d6s and d8s for all of its challenges. Most things, like normal movement, the heroes won't have to roll to succeed at. For more complex actions, like attacks and challenges under extreme stress, you must roll dice. The standard rule is that a roll of 5 or greater on the dice is high enough to succeed at standard challenges, but modifiers in special situations will often change the circumstances, and combat is its own thing altogether. Each player chooses a character to play as. When your character gains enough experience, they may even choose one of two specialty classes to go into as well. You can be the Squire, a warrior specializing in melee combat who can become a knight or a mercenary. The Novice, a healer and support figure who can become a preacher or a plague doctor. The Scum, a roguish street urchin who can become a thief or an assassin. Or the Apprentice, a magic user who can become either a mage or a chronomancer. Every character has five stats, and each stat has a different number depending on the character and their strengths. Mastery will determine which type of dice the character gets to roll. Rapidity is the character's speed determining how many action points they get and when they can activate in the round. Physical is how many dice the character will roll for physical challenges. Mind is how many dice the character will roll for mental challenges. And Wounds is the amount of damage you can take before you're incapacitated. The character sheets also have spots for the character's gear and status effects they may be affected by. Each character also gets starting equipment cards, which will give them specific types of actions and can even be sold later, and skill cards representing the character's special abilities. These have a learning cost at the bottom. On the not so good side, each hero is going to get a perillium, a dial which keeps track of threat that can draw enemies towards them. 
Many actions like wounding and moving can draw threat, as well as special actions dictated by the mission. Enemy cards represent the foes you will fight the same way, with similar stats, but also the special attacks an enemy will use against you, either physical or mental. They even have their own equipment. The game will come with a campaign book which will detail how you should set up each mission, though the regular rulebook will have a basic starter campaign as well. You will build the map from various terrain boards, 3D scenery, and any starting units including the heroes. You'll also set up the Horologium next to the mission boards, which, will, which I'll explain in a moment. One player will read the story blurb for the mission and the win-loss conditions and special rules of the battlefield, and then the game can begin. The Horologium is a very important part of the game. Players and enemies alike will have activation tokens placed on the dial, and the mission will tell you where the hour hand and the minute hand will start, with all of the tokens being placed in the space to the left of the minute hand. Whenever the minute hand moves into a space, every token, and therefore character, in the space must activate in order of rapidity, and move forward on the dial according to how many action points they've used. Then, someone will move the minute hand forward and repeat the process. Heroes activate and use action points to perform several different types of actions whenever they're entitled to an activation. They never have to use all of their action points, though the enemies do. A hero must spend activation until he has no more to spend, or until he has passed the first, the first sector occupied by an enemy. Heroes can move at the cost of one action point per square, only orthogonally. They can also spend three action points to attack, either with a melee or ranged weapon, by rolling dice equal to the physical value on the item. Additionally, they can use action points to activate skills, use special abilities on items, engage or disengage an enemy, wait, or search a treasure chest. Combat is straightforward. When a hero attacks an enemy, he rolls dice as described before and tries to meet or beat the enemy's physical or mental defense. Enemy attacks against the heroes are similar, except a few important differences. The hero's defense is actually a challenge roll based on either their physical or mental stat. Enemies also may ignore the threat of the heroes if the threat of their mission in the scenario is greater. When they do attack the heroes, they will have a pre-programmed action which includes all pertinent stats, including range and the difficulty heroes must check against to avoid the attack. After a mission is completed, the heroes will travel across a map of Italy and potentially stop at cities and villages where they can visit various shops, including an inn, a surgeon, a merchant, and a quartermaster, where you can replace characters who have been killed or who have received too many serious wounds. There's even craftsmen who can make brand new items for the characters based on specific ingredients that are collected throughout their journey. There's much more to Nova Atos, but that should give you a taste of what to expect. Now, let's get to my final thoughts. Well, I think it's impressive that even just from the prototype version of the game, you can see the, the scope and the scale of this with the 3D terrain and with all the different miniatures that they're going to have and uh, all the, the different uh, things that you interact with, like the trees, the bushes, all these, the well, all the stuff that's going to be in the game and just give it this really epic feel. And I mentioned in my intro that this game was based on games like Final Fantasy Tactics, which is a personal favorite video game of mine. It might be my, my all-time favorite video game. And I recall in that game how interesting it was that you could move your characters in grid-based combat, but you were also uh, working around the terrain and walking up hillsides and getting advantage on your foes and all of this different stuff. And you can see a lot of that at, at play here in Nova Atos. And when you mix that together with the theme, which I think is the most standout aspect of Nova. It's uh, it's something I haven't really seen before. I've seen alternate history takes on things, but actually, most of the time, when you're talking about alternate history, it's in the modern day, where it's like uh, the man in the high castle, where alternate World War II leads to the timeline changing, things like that. But to set it in uh, Renaissance-era Italy, which is not a far, it's not a big stretch from like the, the Dark Ages, uh, which, you know, it, it's easy to see a fantasy-based game based on that, but to just escalate the timeline a little bit, <laughs> to go forward and put it into this very distinctive time period that is shades of uh, Assassin's Creed. Uh, the last time I saw a lot of these terms like condottiere and uh, all these different types of things was when I was playing Assassin's Creed 2, I think, so that shows you how long I've been out of the video game game, but <laughs> to 
take that theme and then mix it together with fantasy elements and to have them blend together uh, pretty seamlessly. Like, they didn't go over the top and have, like, you know, elves and orcs running around the streets. They said, well, it would make sense based on mythology that things like fawns and centaurs might be a thing. And so they they did that and they blended them together. And I think it's very interesting how they did that. Definitely the first thing you're going to notice. Other really interesting aspects, and this goes back to the Final Fantasy Tactics and Tactics Ogre comparison, is the, I'm going to butcher the name, I'm sorry, but the Hologarium, the Hologarium, which is how you keep track of the different actions that everyone has. It's a very interesting concept because it also functions like those video games where, uh, Everyone has actions that they take that requires a certain amount of time to pull off. And they don't get to act again until it gets to their turn in the order. It's unlike a lot of other games where it's just like, okay, it's the player's turn. Now everyone takes their turn in order, and then it goes to the enemies. Now it's, okay, where are we at on the dial? Who's there? Everyone activate, take your actions. However, depending on the action points you use, you're going to go ahead, and you don't get to go again until the dial moves up to you. So that's very interesting, something I haven't seen in really any other physical board game um, in the recent past. Despite how many different cooperative fantasy games there have been, there's a lot of these elements in Nova Atos that just stand out. But at the same time, they keep something simple, and that is to the game's benefit. Uh, the, the simplicity of the combat system and how enemies react. They really had a plan in mind that they wanted to make this a fully cooperative game rather than make it a descent system style one versus all game in order to do that they needed a very simple straightforward ai system and i think that they accomplished that with nova atos on top of making just the general combat with the players how they use their equipment how they use their spells how they go to town in between and and level up and skill up these things are all kept just very streamlined so that you can get to the action of the game and to really experience that theme and the tactical versions of the tactical elements of the combat, adding in other lots of other things in the game. I mean, the whole idea of how uh, the uh, specializations work and how you can custom make your character and choose the path that you want to go down. There's just a lot of different things to unpack in this game. It definitely uh, feels like uh, a standout within this category or subgenre of games. So if any of that appeals to you, if you think you're within that target audience, of people who like fantasy games, but also unique fantasy games, tactical uh, grid-based combat, um, and just really something that's unique and innovative, you should definitely check out the official Kickstarter project page for Nova Atos. And like I said, you do not have a lot of time. So if you're interested, don't procrastinate. Go over there right now and get more information, more than I could possibly tell you here. Find out for yourself if the game is going to be right for you. There's going to be a link in the top corner of your screen and also in the description section of the video. That is Nova Atos from Ludus Magnus Studio. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.